Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to a new week. Hope you had a great week last week. Yeah. yeah. Right. So let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. So maybe one of us can please lead a prayer and get into our class. Any one of us can lead, please. I'll pray. I'll pray. I'll pray. I'll pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of life that you've given all of us. Father, as we come into your presence, Father, I pray that we'll bless and we'll reach our teacher, Pastor Paul Emmanuel, so that we are going to use him as a bridge to teach us, Father Jehovah. I commit everybody into your hands, Father Jehovah, that whatever we are going to learn, Father Jehovah, let it be for your honor and glory, Father Jehovah. I pray trusting in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Kennedy. All right. So let me just uh, project the notes, present the notes here. Uh, so we've been talking a lot about uh, you know, small groups and discipleship. And how as leaders, we must you know continually develop ourselves. So last week, we talked about developing the leader in each of us. Now, just because I'm teaching, it doesn't mean that, you know, Oh, uh, you know, I don't have to work on it. So we, you know, every moment of our life as leaders, uh, we are continuously learning. Right? There's never a place or never a time when we can say, I know it all, and so I'm ready to do what I have to do. No, we are continually growing, continually developing, and this is something that will happen always. Right. So last week, we talked about developing the leader in you, uh, four important areas of growth and leadership. We saw competence. Uh, that is, competence is basically what we have learned, our skill, our experience, uh, and all of this matters, right? Uh, two is our confidence. Confidence is very important. If we are not confident, uh, for example, we have a message or a sermon to share for 40 minutes, we must be confident that we know the message, we know what we're talking about, uh, so the practical aspect as well. Uh, you know, not being afraid of failure, or confidence that, hey, I don't think I can go up on this stage, or I don't think this is something that God has called me for. So uh, as leaders, we need to build confidence in ourselves. And of course, stay around people who will encourage and build confidence in us. Thirdly, compassion. Uh, and this is very important because we saw that Jesus, whatever he did, he was motivated by compassion. Right. So even as we do the small groups, ministry, uh, our motivation, the real reason for what we are doing, ministry must be compassion. Right? Uh, because sometimes, you know, we are we like to do something and we you know we very easily flow into that. And that's wonderful because God gives us those gifts and those skills that you know, we can develop and very easily we can get into the call that God has for us. But there are times, uh, you know, when we get into that calling and it becomes a comfort zone. So uh, we are ministering out of not an obligation, but we are ministering out of just, you know, uh, hey, this is what I have to do. That's not what Jesus did. Even though he moved around, he met with hundreds and thousands of people, he always taught and he preached um, about the, his message. It was all motivated by compassion, all motivated by love. So everywhere in his ministry, we see Jesus was moved with compassion. Uh, or he was moved with love. He loved the people. And that must be our desire as well. Uh, ministry to, without compassion, you know, ministry becomes a burden. And that's really true. Right? Because imagine you, as a leader, you've got so many people you know, they come and tell you, oh, this is my problem. This is what I'm going through. And then they, they say, can you pray for me? Can you do this? Can you come home? Can you, can you minister to us? Uh, can you tell us why this is happening in our lives? And when we do it on our own strength, right, uh, not out of love, out of compassion, it becomes a burden. We feel, oh, man, I have to go back here. I have to talk to these people. It becomes a burden. So, minister out of love. Then we talked about collaboration, uh, developing the ability to work together. 
uh, work together as teams, work with different organizations, build a connection with each other, uh, think about the sources and support and strength that God uh, puts in your life. So connecting with people, again, is important. Then we look at five levels of leadership, position, permission, production, people development, and person. So the five Ps. Uh, and, and so very importantly, we also looked at developing the ability to minister the word and the spirit. Right? Uh, Paul writes to Timothy and says, Timothy, you preach the word. Right? So it's an ability that we can, you know, uh, the, the most beautiful part is, even as we learn it, right, the ability to learn the word, teach the word. It's not like we're doing it, oh man, I, you know, I'm, I'm called to be a pastor, so I have to do it. No, we're doing it because we love the Lord. One, two, we're doing this because it not only empowers us, but God has put us in a place where we can be a blessing to others. So it is the greatest privilege that we can have, right? Uh, so Paul tells Timothy, you teach the word. And preach the word, become a student of the word. Uh, then also the other aspects of baptism of the Holy Spirit, ministering healing on people, uh, ministering deliverance, uh, developing the ability to counsel one another. Uh, and so we also looked at that. So today we look at uh, chapter 20, developing people and relations, relationship skills. Right? Now I'm sure all of us must have heard this. You know, I, I was from an uh, uh, L&D, Learning and Development, in my previous organization, many years ago, this is. And, and I remember they would always say, it's all about people, right? Uh, so when, when it comes to human resource, HR, uh, human resource management, it's all about people, right? Without the people, there is no ministry. Without the people, there is no business. Without the people, there is nothing. Uh, remember when COVID hit, how is life? It, it was so, you, you just want to go out and talk to people. It could even be the vendors on the streets who just come out with their, you know, uh, fruits and whatever they're selling. Even to talk to them, we feel, okay, it's nice. At least it spoke to a few people. Why? Because God has created us to be relation, relational. None of us can say, I don't need to be in a relationship. Uh, it could be with parents, brothers, siblings, uh, friends, uh, you know, peers. We all are built for them. I, uh, I remember those, especially in India, I don't know if it happened in the other country, but India, there was 21 days of that, you know, that lockdown where we couldn't go out. So I think it was 5 a.m. or something, they had opened the, the stores at 5 to 6, 6.30. That's the only time you have. You go pick up what you need and come back home. And you know, uh, I, and I realized that uh, during those days, uh, you know, I began to think about what, what, what we are doing. Right. So we are so wired to people. It's just that we don't realize. We don't realize that we take people for granted. Uh, but but it's so true. God has called us to be relational. And Ministry is not about how you know uh, how many people I have in my church. No, it's not about that. Ministry is about the people that you're able to develop and build a relationship with. Right? Uh, yes, it's wonderful. You know, uh, God is building the church. God sends people like uh, a church. So it's wonderful to see a church growing. Right? I personally have seen it it's so nice right we get new families into church young people come in and then you see the church growing it's wonderful but remember it's not about the target is not about okay i need to reach 500 people or thousand people yes that could be there but but we must know that ministry is about people and it's not about the tasks that we do there is a place for tasks there is a place for programs that we are able to see do a lot of tasks and programs and events, but it's about people. Are people being ministered to? Are people being developed? Are our relationships being built? These are questions that we must ask ourselves. Right. So remember, in 
those 12 people or 10 or 12 people in your cell group are as much important as the 500 who are sitting in church. Right? Because ministry is about people. Picture this, right? The Apostle Paul, he went on in his missionary journeys. When they started the churches, how many people would have been there? They were all house churches, probably 20, 15, 20 people, 10 people. Uh, remember last, I think it was last semester, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, when he went into Athens, he went into Corinth, and the church that was started, there were three people, they said, three or four people. Few of them became believers in the Lord. It started off small. Right? And, and that's, the Apostle Paul understood this. In one of his letters, he says, you are my crown in heaven. Right. So Paul is not saying, I, I did first missionary journey, second, third, I planted so many churches, I went to so many places, these are the uh, churches I started, these are the epistles that I've written, and I, I've also met with the Lord Jesus in Arabia, He told me what I should do, uh, I've gone up to the third heaven. He says, my crown in heaven is you people. So this is a very big, very important lesson for us as leaders. I, uh, I, I remember this, and it's, it's engraved in my spirit, in my mind. Uh, you know, it's wonderful to see things that we are successful in, and, you know, we, uh, and God has been faithful to us. It's wonderful. But we don't boast about that. It's about the people. How many people are we able to impact? Like, getting rid of fear of meeting people. Like, now, there may be some of us right, who are who are not very keen to meet new people, right? So we need to come out come out of all of that, right? For proactively meet with newcomers in church. Uh, five, if you want friends, you got to make them. Right? Proverbs eighteen twenty four: A man that had friends must show himself friendly. Right? Uh, five: Be sensitive to people, their background, culture, and upbringing. Proverbs 16, 21, the wise in heart shall be called prudent and the sweetness of lips increaseth learning. Some, some translation says the sweetness of lips increases knowledge, right? So be sensitive to people. And we talked about this previously as well, right? So there'll be people coming from different backgrounds, different cultures, different upbringings, different faiths. Be very sensitive to them. Right? Uh, can't just say whatever we feel like saying. Um, especially, I would say, in rural areas, because of the zeal of God, they may not know how to put across things. And many times, ministries have got into problems. And, and, and so we need to be wise, right? Yes, it's about people. So people have feelings, have emotions. So we need to uh, minister to them the right way. Being kind, courteous, and wise without being compromising. Uh, now, this is an ability that comes over time as well, right? Uh, we go through seasons, we're ministering to people, uh, maybe a year, two years. Uh, there are ups and downs. We learn from our mistakes. Oh, you know, I should have done it this way instead of doing it this way. You know? and, and many times, I personally as well, you know, I've, I've learned from my mistakes uh, because some of the things was, was simple things. Right? All I had to do was send an email, but maybe I didn't do it, right? Uh, and then I realized, hey, I should have just sent an email and, uh, you know, all of this would have not happened. And so we learn over time, right? But don't let those failures bring you down. Right? Learn from it and pick up from there, right? Uh, being kind and courteous to people, uh, being wise in the way we, we behave. Right uh, now, as leaders, we need the wisdom of God. And uh, I was sharing with the other class as well, uh, second years as well. But you know, wisdom is something that we as leaders in the church need. It's a it's a big need right now because see, God is pouring out His Spirit. God is, you know, using so many of them. There's anointing, there's, there's, there's a gifts, there's grace, there's healings, miracles, that's wonderful. Right? But we also need the wisdom to handle all of this. Right? 
uh, because uh, I, I I know of I've heard of many stories where ministries have broken down and pastors and big leaders have fallen because they are greatly anointed right? they're greatly anointed they, they have great understanding of the word wonderful preachers expository teachings uh, you know very well learned big ministries but because of some unwise choices because of compromising the whole ministry has come from. And, and that could be financial uh, because of financial reasons that uh, it could be because of uh, you know uh, behavioral problems it could be because of adultery uh, fornication it could be because of uh, love for money all kinds of things so we need the wisdom of God sometimes it's it's teachings that is erroneous that has caused problems or they've said something and I remember the time forget what I just but uh, during the elections uh, in the United States any power you know all these pastors and wonderful wonderful men and women of God and what happened they started saying you know uh, this job this person will then God has spoken to me the Lord came to me in a dream God gave me to uh, you know came and sat with me and told me this may be true uh, but then after that whatever they Prophesied was not true. It didn't. It wasn't even true. And so what happened? Everyone started pointing fingers at each other. There are some ministries here. They're saying, "Hey, this person said this, this, this is a false prophet. None of it happened." And and the church was going through a very difficult time. There was a lot of ridicule and mocking between each other. Right? Why? Because of lack of wisdom. Right? If God gives us a word. God gives us a certain Know, a plan or he he reveals something to us there's a way to put it across right uh, and that's why uh, some of the things that we teach our students is always you know when you're getting a prophetic word when you're getting a word of knowledge when you feel the lord is ministering to you there are words that you can use that can help you, right? just being wise right so say uh, hey here's what i sense here's what i feel that god can do for you i feel that god is you know uh, leading you to go abroad and do your studies. Now, this is what I sense. This is what I feel. Maybe you can pray about it, think about it, and see if this is what uh, God is leading you towards. Now, what have you done? You have put across the word. You haven't compromised. Right? It said, hey, said what God has put in your heart and what you sense in his book. Said it. But you're also saying, you know, maybe this is uh, this is what I feel. This is what I sense. You also pray about it, think, and, and and see if this is where God is leading you towards. Now, what are we doing? We're being wise. Because later, we don't want people to come and say, Oh, Pastor, you said, you know, give me a prophetic word, but I will go abroad. Nothing has worked out. Uh, and see, I'm still here. It's five years now. And so, uh, so it's all about being wise. But not compromising. And, and this can be for anything. Uh, there are times when, uh, you know, even in, in terms of uh, genders, right, and, and leadership. So what we do is uh, men, uh, men leaders, women leaders, we all work together as a team. We're very careful about how we, uh, you know, how we portray ourselves, how we do things together. We all are a team, uh, but we walk in wisdom. Right? Uh, so these are things that we develop over the years. Be kind, courteous, wise overcome personality weaknesses. Okay? Now, we may all have different personalities, and I've shared with you many times that you know, can be introverts, very soft, very kind, very, you know, don't like to talk much. Uh, you need to overcome it, right? Because as leaders, you know, we, are, we, are, we are people person. We need to build relationships. We know that we're going to deal with people. So we have to overcome personality weaknesses. I remember when I joined uh, APC, uh, I was uh, very shy, very, very shy. Right? So uh, I, I'm the most comfortable when I'm alone. I'll be very comfortable. 
right? Uh, I can sit, it's a church, there are 500 people. If I'm sitting alone, I'm more than comfortable. But all of a sudden, you know, I joined and I was taking part of, uh, you know, I guess handling the life groups. And during those days, we had about nine, 10 life groups. Uh, and so all of a sudden, I was, I was doing life group and member care. Now, life group requires me to talk to uh, people, connect them to life groups, train life group leaders, right? And member care requires me to, you know, just care for the members, right? So that will involve calling, talking, praying for them, uh, you know, meeting them. They would come for prayer. Maybe sometimes they would help, want some kind of godly counsel or some kind of help. And so it was all about people, very less to do on the computers. Right? Now, I, I liked it. But the problem was, I was an introvert. I was very shy. Sometimes I didn't know what to say. Right? English and all of that, maybe, you know, uh, I was comfortable in talking English. But I was very shy. So I, I knew that, hey, if I need to do this, I have to overcome this. I can't say I am shy and not do my work that is assigned to me. Right? Uh, now, was it difficult? Yes. But we have to overcome. That's where the word overcome is. So we need to come out of our comfort zone. Uh, so I remember I used to go to people, I used to talk to them. Uh, I should get to find out how are they and you know, just pray for them, meet with people. And over time, uh, you know, and another thing was I was very comfortable calling them and talking to them. You know, because I worked in a call center for many years. Uh, so I was okay. But the moment I have to meet with people and you know, there are like, you know, even if I was training some people, uh, it would, you know, I, I would become very nervous. Uh, but over time, right, uh, I thank God that God gives us the grace to overcome all this. And so you and I, we may have certain weaknesses, right? Uh, I, I remember I, one of my classmates in a Bible called, he would always say, you know, his hands, everything starts shaking when he goes in front to speak. His hands, his, uh, he, he kind of, it can be uh, summer and hot outside, but he starts shivering, right? Uh, and I was, uh, you know, we both were very quiet, but we would always encourage each other and say, hey, come on, you can do it. Uh, you know, we did some practical things. I would say, why don't you wear a jacket and, you know, go and speak? And uh, uh, over time, we thank God. Uh, when we step out, God steps in. Uh, so I would encourage each one of us, right? Um, it could be anything. Maybe some of us don't like to read. We don't uh, don't feel comfortable doing a certain thing. It's okay. Just just ask God to give you the grace to come out of it. Because uh, as leaders, we must be willing to do these things, right? A leader's most important asset is people skills. You must develop it. You know, recently I was just talking to a few new people at church and uh, they were talking after the service and, and they were all just two, this couple, they were standing alone and they were new. And so I went to them and I started speaking to them and, uh, you know, they were saying, they just told me after the entire conversation, they said to me, you know, I was going to leave, uh, I was not feeling comfortable because, you know, there are so many people in this church. I remember... Uh, just talking to them, uh, that hey, uh, you know, there are many people, but then you can get connected. We have life groups. Uh, uh, so I really got to know them. Where are they from? They were coming from another city. They are newly married, come from another city. They don't know anybody. Nobody. They don't know no places in Bangalore, right, in this city. Uh, and they're just using, you know, the Google Maps and they're finding places. They went on Google, said churches near me. The first thing that came was ATC. So they came. Nothing. They just probably a week in Bangalore. Uh, but last week they came to church again and they said, oh, I, uh, and I, when I saw them, they were talking to so many couples in the church. I was so happy. Right? Why? Because uh, they somehow got connected. Now they're not, they don't feel alone in the church. Or in, in the city, they know that there is there is a church, there are people in the church that they can connect with. And that's why people skills is so important in ministry. Right? A good leader can lead various groups because leadership is about people. Right? So he can lead a cell group, 
right? He can lead a member care team, he can lead a media team, right? Now, not to overburden yourself, but you can lead, lead, lead two or three groups because it's about people, right? And if you look at pioneers, people in ministry who have started off, why do they start ministry? Not because they you know, want to get name, fame, uh, think about that. It's because of people. Right? Now, here's another important point. You can have people skills and not be a good leader. But you cannot be a good leader without people skills. You get that? You can have people skills, but not be a good leader. So for example, we can have people skills, we can talk to people for hours, we can pray for them, we can do all of it. But in terms of leadership, we may not be effective. But we cannot be a good leader without people skills. So to be a good leader, people skills must. Right? Leadership is relationships. Uh, whichever ministry you're leading, it's all about relationships. Build them. Build each other. Right? There will be times when people in your ministry or in your churches will come and say, hey, uh, I, I'd like to give you some feedback about the way you preach and teach. Be open to it. Never say, hey, I'm the leader, you are the, uh, you are the sheep, and you have to listen to me. Uh, or never feel... Say it, but never feel in a heart more than this person. I'm already preaching the whole bit, I'm already preaching, teaching. I've been doing this for 10 years as a person. Uh, he's just coming to church one year and he's telling give me advice, giving me feedback on you. Never feel that way. Leadership is about free. And only when we are open to this team, we can get this. Right? Now, or it may be a 500 people in your ministries, whatever it is. When it comes to people, you will find all different kinds of people in the church. Right? And now I say this because you know, uh, I have this wonderful opportunity to call and you know, I talk to a lot of church folks, and these are. Uh, so we have five locations in Bangalore, and so uh, I, I talk to people from all across, like north, south, east, west, and central. So uh, uh, you know, just calling them, talking to them, talking about maybe they want to start a life group, they want to connect to a life group, uh, you know, uh, different other matters as well. Uh, but here's the thing that we must remember: people are insecure. We need to give them confidence. This is really true because many times you know, I would I would probably look at a couple of uh, a couple or a youth. Uh, I see them. And I say, hey, this person can be a good leader. So many times I've gone up to them and said, hey, why don't you? you know, you've been coming to church for two years. Why don't you start a life group? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. You know, how how is the life group and how? But over time. You know, just being there, just to just by encouraging them, they've become very good life group leaders. They have also raised up other life group leaders, and now uh, they're in a position to train other life group leaders. All they needed was a little push. Hey, you can do it. You can do it. Go ahead. Right, um, and it could be other volunteering teams in the church as well. You can do it. Give people opportunities. Give them confidence. Now, when they make mistakes, uh, give them feedback, encourage them, right? People like to feel special, so honor them, right? Honor your church folks, honor people in your ministries, right? Uh, treat them like how you would like to be treated. Honor people. Uh, people look for a better tomorrow, so give them hope, right? Now, uh, always, you know, in our preaching and teaching, yes, we know, uh, you know uh, things that are happening right now. Uh, you know, there are many things that are happening, earthquakes and wars, and the economy is going up and down, and there's fluctuation in the markets, and all kinds of things are happening, right? But 
they come to church or they come to you uh, not to get you know a review of what is happening in the newspapers or uh, or the news headlines the reason they come to you is because they want to hear words of hope they want to hear something that can encourage and lift them and sometimes people come up to us and say oh, no, I've been going through this problem now I'm really afraid about my children because uh, I mean, they are teens and look at what is happening uh, you know, the things that are happening they are exposed to so much of filth on the internet uh, I'm worried that was a genuine fear now imagine they come up and share to me and I will say oh yes oh, man, I have two kids I'm also really fearful I will work now my kids are only at school, but they are exposed to all of this. What's going to happen? Like the person who has come for some hope will say, oh, man, that's even worse. And they are not gone back and cut it. So people are hoping and looking for a better tomorrow. So give them hope. Give them words from the scripture. And so some things that you can say, hey, don't worry. God has said, you know, uh, our children will be like quivers. Uh, uh, and our children will be like trees planted by the rivers of water. God is with them. We just keep putting the word of God in them. We may not be there, but the Holy Spirit is there with them. Uh, and they will get through this once they grow into you. That uh, you know, once they uh, once they keep as they keep growing, uh, they'll overcome all of these teenage things. Uh, so that they feel encouraged. People need to be understood. Listen to them. Never make a mistake of saying hey uh, you know you didn't understand me or never say never come to a place where you say uh, I know what you're talking about no. uh, we as leaders must take the time to listen to them and that's why some of the things that we do in APC uh, is we have a lot of volunteer teams right? now each volunteer team has a volunteer leader Right. So those we meet with the volunteer team leaders, and we get together and we talk and we say, okay, oh, what's been happening over the last three months? What are the things that worked out? Things that didn't work out? How can we better ourselves? Uh, and so we're just listening to them, being available. Now, in terms of a cell group, uh, people may want to be heard. They just want to share their heart out. And there are people who are going through challenges, going through difficulties, no one to share with. They may not be even able to share with their own spouse or their own family members. Uh, but when they come to a self group, they may open up to you, listen to them. Right? People lack direction. Navigate for them. Right? Not navigate them. Navigate for them. Help them. Right? Now, again, as I mentioned, we don't make uh, their decisions, right? We can help them. We can say, hey, also, for example, you know, uh, a youth or a, says, you know, I don't want to uh, do my studies. I want to work for two years and then study. Now, uh, looking at it's, 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 a, it's not like it's a full home, right? Maybe this person or youth would like to you know, just work for some time, get some knowledge in the corporate world, and then study. So you help them navigate uh, whether if you if can say, hey, uh, if, if this is what you want to do, then you need to immediately get a job uh, because you need to be helping at home. And then you can save up and then uh, decide how you want to start studying, where you want to study again. Is it in this nation or you want to travel abroad and do your studies? Uh, just being there to give them direction. People are needy. Speak to their needs first. People get emotionally low, encourage them. People want to succeed, help them when people desire relationships, so provide a community. Very important. People desire relationships. And community is very important because, you know, if you have a cell group or your church or ministry and people have built relationships with each other, yes, you come to church for worship God, to spend time in God's presence, but those relationships, the community that has already been built is a very strong aspect. So it gets all of them together. Now, how does this 
relationship is built, how is this community built? It's built over time. By people just, you know, as a leader, you set the tone, you set the example, right? Uh, so you be there, talk to people, let everyone see that you are a person who talks to people. It's not like people preach and then you know, run away from the back door, you know? They're there. They're talking to people. They know that we are around. I mean, they know that, hey, he maybe just preaching, but then we're all together. We are one, right? Uh, providing community, providing uh, and desiring relationships, right? People seek models to follow. So be an example. Very important. Be an example, right? So let's get into any questions. Any questions with regards to uh, any questions with regards to people? Okay, Kennedy says, how do you handle poverty given that it can be a challenge in relationships in a church set, given that there could be a divide between the rich and poor? This is the, the prosperity gospel. Okay, yeah, that's a very good question, Kennedy. Now, Apostle Paul, Oh, sorry, the, the epistle of James answers that very, uh, very clearly. He says, what if a person comes to the church with good clothes or good jewelry or whatever, and will you, you know, and you give them the front seat, and a poor man comes, and you, know, uh, you, you tell that person, go at the back or sit at my feet. James says, that this is favoritism, and we have done something dishonorable in the eyes of God, right? So how do we handle it? We first, as leaders, need to set the example, right? So we need to, now, for example, we are starting a life group, or we're starting a, a, a ministry. Set the tone from the beginning. Whether you give offering, whether you don't give offering, whether you come in a car, whether you come by cycle, whether you come in a chopper or aircraft, or whether you come, you know, just walking, you are all the same. In this place, you set the tone as leaders, right? So it's not that okay because you give so much offering, or just because you're rich, you have to do this. I mean, you know, you 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 are. There's some kind of extra. Uh, love for you or extra or the same for you. No. So set the tone right from the beginning. Now, one one of the there are two ways. One is you set it by an example. Two is you teach from God's word. Right? One, you set the tone by example. So if a rich person comes, so treat him the same. Two, you teach from God's word to the people that it's not that all of us are equal. And now we're teaching it, we must also show it, right? We must show it in the way we behave, right? the way we act. I remember uh, when I was at Manglo at the church there, uh, we were a small church, right? maybe about 20, 25 people. Uh, and then slowly it started growing. And there was this, suddenly this very, very rich person in the city of Bangalore in India, very rich, right? He's a big builder, you know, very, very rich person. So he came into church. And after church, I was just talking to all the church folks. Everyone were very worried. Everyone were coming to me and saying, oh, you want to go talk to him? You want to go talk to this person? I said, hey, why is everyone doing that? Then one of our elderly church folks said, Oh, he's a big builder, he's a millionaire, he's a big builder. Uh, he's come to the small church, so you need to go and talk to him. I remember very clearly, I, I, very clearly that day, I prayed, I said, God, give me wisdom. I remember what I said to them. These are my church folks. I said to them, he will wait, just like how others are waiting in life. Now he's way, you know, Way, way, way above me in terms of wealth and all of that. Right? Uh, and he's elder to me, done big things. There are people who are standing in line for prayer. If he wants prayer, he will stand in the line. 
and I remember our church folks, uh, you just go speak to him, otherwise he may not uh, come next to you. They said, that's okay. These are people who are standing in line for the prayer after church. So he has to stand. And so I didn't go. And I stood there. And he stood in the line for prayer. And I prayed for everyone. I prayed for him normally. And then he said, uh, you know, uh, he, didn't, he didn't make a big show about who he is, right? Uh, but the people in the church were worried because, you know, he's like this big millionaire. Uh, and then I remember I made it a teaching moment that day. I very clearly remember. After this whole thing, he just came for prayer. I prayed for him. I said, God bless you. If you're first time here, give your name and number to our volunteers. One of them from the church will uh, call and pray for you. What we do to everyone. He went back home, uh, and then I remember that day, that week, during the week, I met with all the church folks. We were about 20 people, so I met with all the leaders and the church. Then, see, you are all equal to me. There are 20, 25 people, you all are equal. It doesn't matter who comes, whether he's a good or not. Uh, in God's eyes, we're all the same. So, even if he comes next week, just be normal. It's okay. Don't have to move the fan towards him. Don't have to, you know, feel that. Shame. Just be normal. It's not So they said, thank you for telling us this. They really feel honored. And so next week, he came. And they were normal. And eventually, this rich, rich man, very rich man. So he kept coming and he kept saying, there's something different about you and your church because you all didn't treat me what like what the other churches did. They made you come in front, put me in the front row. They announced that this person didn't bother about all that. All you did was you preached, you finished, and you made me stand on the line, which I liked. I liked being normal and all of them. Right. And of course, he, uh, owed, he he still attends every now and then church because he's big now. He keeps traveling, but we set the example. So now our church members know. Even if the president comes, he does just stand in line, wait for twelve. Doesn't matter. And so I think Kennedy, it is one you teach from God's word. Two, you set the tone. You set the example. And, and then three, you have you talk to your talk to your people, showed by your example. Uh, and as you keep doing that, people will will realize, hey, I know this leader. He's he's going to do this phase. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, just a moment, please. Let's see. Present the notes. Any other questions? Any other questions? OK, so what we'll do is uh, we'll stop here. Uh, and since we have uh, a little more left, what I, uh, what I suggest we can do is we will uh, we'll not take the next class, but you can spend the next class just uh, studying, reading. Uh, you can look up your, you know, discipleship, or you can talk about uh, uh, anything that is happening. I mean, any of your courses you'd like to study, you can study. But take this next hour to study. Uh, we'll meet next week, and we'll continue talking about uh, leadership. Is that okay? Right. Uh, all right. So we'll just close in prayer. Uh, can any one of us please uh, pray and close? Maybe you can just pray that each one of us will, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, we can also pray that you know each one of us can develop in uh, in our people skills. God gives us the grace uh, to you know to do what He has called us to do. So, uh, yes, go ahead, Elisha. Would you like to pray? Yes, Pastor. I would like to pray. Please go ahead. Our heavenly Father, once again, we are grateful. We thank you for the love that you have bestowed on us. And we thank you for appointing us and calling us into various 
leadership and into various roles in your ministry. Father, we pray, O oh God, that as you have called us, you anoint us to be able to do our, our, our perform our functions effectively and to be able to raise the people that you have entrusted to us. Father, we pray that you help us, you grant us the grace to nurture our various small groups and disciple our members into the fullness of Christ. Father, we pray that, Lord, oh God, you grant us the leadership skills, the people skills that we need to be able to manage our members, to be able to lead our members in an exemplary way. Father, you help us in this, in this area where we are weak. Father, let your strength, oh God, strengthen us. Where we don't have grace, Father, be gracious unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you will equip us with people skills, you will equip us and you anoint us to be able to lead your people into the promised land. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, uh, what I'll do is I will post the midterm assessments uh, during this week. So just take some time and uh, do your assignments and post it. I'll, I'll put the guidelines as well. So I, I'm sure most of us know uh, e-learning students as well. Uh, your, I'll put up the midterm assessment so you can do that as well. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you next week. God bless.